Welcome back to Author's Note. Enrico Letta, Italy's recently appointed Prime Minister, is a very ambitious man. He wants to slash taxes on property and labour, increase spending on education and yet still respect the deficit target Italy has agreed with Brussels. Is this a realistic plan? And will Mr Letta be capable of improving Italy's recent lacklustre growth performance? Discussing this with me today is Riccardo Barbieri, Chief European Economist at Mizuho International. Good morning, Ricardo. Hello. Let's have a look at the first chart which you've uh, brought to you today. And this is about the European Commission verdict on Italy. This is what uh, Oli Ren, uh, the economic czar in the Commission, was talking about at the end of last week. Um, and we've got here the figures on the, both the actual budget deficit and the structural deficit with the forecast for 2013-2014. It's not looking too bad, is it? Now, the Commission has been quite positive on Italy's budget pros uh, and prospects. Um, they think the deficit will be around 2.9% as expected by the government so far uh, in 2013 and then decline modestly in 2014. They think the structural budget balance that is adjusted for the business cycle uh, will fall further but actually widen a bit in 2014. So what they're saying is essentially Italy has been making a lot of progress, however, in order to hit the so-called medium-term objective, that is a balanced structural budget, they need to do at least 0.7% of GDP of additional uh, budgetary restriction by next year. So more austerity. So how does this square with Mr. Letta's plan to slash taxes? Well, <coughs> I think it means that uh, Letta, in, at least in principle, should come up with alternative uh, budget savings, be it expenditure cuts or tax hikes. What, obviously, one would like to see expenditure cuts. Because that, that's where Mr. Monti has been a bit shy. It's been well, very good on increasing yes. taxes, but less so on... Uh, yes, Monti uh, presented what he called the spending review. Uh, the overall result of that, according to Monti, should be slightly more than 11 billion euros over a fairly long period of time, so by 2015, and that's only 0.7% of that's GDP. Let's move on yeah. to the second uh, chart which you brought with us, mm. and, and that's the what, what we think, I mean, what, what you, you, mm. you've written in your, in your studies is the real problem for Italy and its growth. As we see here, Italy's been underperforming <coughs> its peers since 2005, so well before the crisis. What should Italy do about this? Well, Italy's had a very disappointing growth performance all along since the start of the euro. I think primarily because the system in Italy needed that degree of flexibility given by uh, exchange rate movements, uh, which obviously it lost with, with the euro. And then throughout the 2000s, instead of reducing government expenditures, reforming the economy, they just uh, sat back and enjoyed the ride uh, in terms of relatively low bond deals until 2007. And then the crisis hit. Italy has also been hit by globalization, the move of traditional industries to Asia. Um, you know, the crisis of the auto market and the Fiat Group in particular has weighed on output growth. And the result of that is that the um, level of GDP is way below where it was in 2007. What should the government do about this? Well, in my opinion, uh, the reforms that Monti initiated uh, should be extended, broadened and deepened, and particularly with reference to the public sector. Um, the public sector needs to be reformed. Uh, you need some degree of flexibility in how they manage employees. Um, efficiency must improve, and they should also think about job cuts in the public sector in order to then reduce the tax burden and make the private sector more dynamic. Then obviously, in addition to that, they need an array of economic and structural reform, uh, including the legal system and other aspects uh, of the country. Just one final question. Yeah. Do you think Mr. Letta can deliver what you, what you hope? Well, Letta personally, of course, could, because I think he has a good understanding of the issues. The question is, does his government, is his government in a position to do so? And I think given the coalition that supports him, unfortunately, I think it will fall short. Thank you, Riccardo Barbieri, for being with us today. Pleasure. So for all Mr. Letta's good intentions, the outlook for Italy remains mixed at best.